Welcome back to You Can Do It. This is the second video in a three-part video series that covers the uh, cleaning, servicing and rebuilding dial caliper. So this video carries on from the first video where we were dismantling the um, caliper and now we're starting to clean and reassemble. So if you haven't seen video one, please watch video one, but this carries straight on from video one. Let's get to it. We'll clean this up. And what I'm going to do with that, I've got a toothbrush, dip that in a bit of this thinners and I'm going to go down there gently like that and clean it all up. This one I'm going to obviously brush it side to side so I can clean and then this one I'm going to clean this up and then probably try and push a rag down there and clean clean the, the channels there. So just to repeat I would not undo these screws because you're into big you're going to then start moving it's all been ground to a perfect um, finish at the moment if you undo that so you're going to there'll be slight movements and you'll be this will not be in exactly the same position relative to that so so let me get cleaning but obviously where i think the main problem is in there which we'll get to that once i've cleaned these up let's clean that up beautifully so i'll put that over there so now i'm going to just try and put if i can you see that's all filthy but if i rub this just rub it all with that thinners. So I'll need two hands to do that. Let's just give you a rough, rough idea. But let me get on. And I'll it's come up beautifully clean. I actually ended up putting a bit of my rag, putting my rag there, sticking that in there, and managed to very gently push that down there with the rag look. So the rag came out there, and that cleaned it all inside. I've cleaned along the top there, inside, top and bottom. So that's uh, the second clean part. So now we've got that, so I'm just going to get my toothbrush again, a bit of uh, alcohol or cleaner or whatever you want on there, and rub it through all the thing there. And then if you've got your air compressor or whatever, you can blow it out. I'm just going to use my brush and a, and a cloth. So yeah, that's looking that. super clean. Takes a bit of time. Again with a toothbrush, and then I finished off with another clean brush to, just to make sure it's all no lint after using the rag. So now what I'm actually going to do is uh, because I'm a bit, well, I don't want to get it's, it's very easy to this falls on the ground and you or whatever you could probably bend it so I want actually to screw that back up in there then I know that's all set and then we can come back to this little baby which is where I think the problem really is the reassembly so there's only one way that this uh, this this can go and because of the way the holes are spaced so that fits in there obviously with the teeth pointing down like we'll get that set up I'll need two hands to do that, but I'm going to then put these screws in there. Um, but, when, but when we tighten this up, what we've got to do is make sure that we're pushing this um, tight against this, this surface. Yeah. So when, as you screw that up, make sure that you're, you've got your nail in there or something in there that's pushing that bar tight up against the machine surface of, the, of this caliper, you see? So let me get on my, and do that. My experience is telling me now after this is just put just put these in loosely, put your three in loosely, and then and then um, they're all basically just in there loosely, and then you can um, go along and tighten them up and keep your nail in there or something to pull that up because there's a very small distance there, you, you know, a gap you can have, and that will make that will make your rack presumably not quite straight, and it'll it'll be tighter in some places than others. I'm going to turn tight. Tight. Those. Look, there's not, there's no gap there along that, along that edge. So we know we're right. I'll put those two together just loosely. But anyway, I'm onto this bit here, so I'm going to clean up this, um, this little sort of uh, shim. But remember, it it bends. Please don't straighten it. So I imagine if you do, you're going to cause all sorts of trouble. So I'm going to clean that up with a bit of. Um, so as we take this, make sure your grooves on top, and then we'll go down from this end. Because if you go down from the other end, you end up hitting that inside and you can't get it in. So I'm obviously trying to hold the camera with one hand and get this in with the other. We slide that in like that. And then that should slide in. There we are. There we are. Flush there. So I'm now going to get that little screw in there and put that in. And then that, that pin will drop into the slot in that uh, shim. You won't be able to move that backwards and forwards. So let me do that now. You can look down that hole there and you can actually see the slot of that shim. So make sure that that slot is obviously in the right place. 
And then we'll get our little um, our little screw, but we need the one, the little grub screw with the pointed end. And we'll put that in there. Okay, a bit of trial and error. So I've put those in there, both of them. Now, if you screw them up tight, what that does is actually just, it locks that shim hard onto here. So what I actually found to do is screw them both down till they lock tight on this, and you won't, you won't literally won't be able to move this. And you just back it off a fraction, and then it moves, and uh, you don't have any you don't have any um, slop in it at all. So I, you know, I'll let you sort that out. You just need to adjust, just play with those until there's it's nice and smooth, but there's no there's no slack in it. And obviously to check, put them together, pull them up to the light. Look, there's no, no light through there. So that's looking good actually. It feels lovely. So now let's get cracking on on with that. Actually, no, I'm going to actually put that on first. I'll put that connect that that wheel back up under there, and then she's all done. Oh, actually, I forgot to put that in as well. I'll put that back in. Let me do that now. Okay, wheels back on. I'm going to push that on there. You just literally just push the black bit on at the end. Look at that. Oh, that feels good. I'm going to put that aside now. We know that's all working and all good to try. So now, this is the bit where we've got to be very careful. I think if I was to undo these two small ones, the whole thing will come apart. But I'm going to take undo this one and this one. I've undone those screws, but now they've come out the back. So make sure that you don't unscrew. Don't just unscrew those, pull that out, and then move this around. You might end up losing those two. So they're the two, two screws, the two nuts that go in the back there. Look. Now, looking at that, it can only go in one way. So I'm not going to be too worried. So why don't we turn that like that? There she is. So that whole mechanism has come out for the whole unit. Now don't undo those two small ones, otherwise I think you're going to have chaos. And that little, the little, um, little dial uh, center in the middle. That's very. Make sure you don't bend that. So I actually think there's some muck in here, and these are tiny, tiny little gears. So again, I'm going to use some compressed air on that, and I'm going to use my tooth, my toothbrush on all those little tiny teeth there. Look, they are tiny. Look, there might be muck in there, so I'm going to use my little brush in there. And clean them up. And there's so there's these two here. Look, you can see that, that they all roll up. They go on that uh, rack. So if they've got any bits of muck in them, that will also make it feel really, uh, really grating. And then there's one right down there in the middle, which is obviously what drives this dial. If that's got any on it, so you have to I'll have to blow that out. So I am now going to try and clean that up as best I can. Wish me luck. I've done a lot. I've spent a lot of time on that, cleaning all that up with a brush and hair and things like that. And I've also you know, been brushing that all up and cleaned all that up. So hopefully that will have solved my, my, my sticking problem, plus obviously cleaning all that out. So, you know, there hasn't been one particular thing I've found where I think, right, that's it, definitely. I thought actually at the beginning that these, um, well, that some of these teeth were actually bent but actually they were actually dirty so once they were cleaned up they looked good so that might have been it I don't know but um, I'm not going any further I'm not going to undo those two ones because I think once that goes so there's loads of springs in there and it's game over so now we'll start the um, the reassembly okay so time to reinstall up so yeah, these little uh, brass nuts have a curved side and a splat side I presume that the curved side is just to help you drop them in here. So I'm going to drop them in, drop them in, the, in their hole, the respective holes. Okay, it was a bit fiddly, but I've got I've got that in. Now I'm thinking that you, I'm not going to tighten those up tight because I've just realised there's look there's there's movement when you, when you, there's a lot there's a bit of movement in there. And when if you depend if you just tighten that up now, when you put this back on here. It might not be right, and then it's it's not going to run right. So I reckon what we have to do is we put this black one. On. We just put this in, put these ones on loosely. We'll put this black one on. We'll tighten this black base up hard tight because this can move around as well. Look. So if you put this at an angle, it isn't going to work properly. So let me put these screws in here. 
and then they'll come back to you. So they're all a little bit loose at the moment, so that we can set it up so it runs. For right, example, I've put that in there. Oh, and the, the gears are not moving at all. So that's how fine, finely adjusted. So, in actual fact, I probably even need to take this black one off. But I'm not. I did because I need to clean clean this. But actually, you could have left that in, and I know I'd been in exactly the right place. So at the moment, look, you can see I put those black that black one in, and tighten it up. But it, it's not. Look, they're not really going round. They're not even touching the the rack. So therefore, my theory is I want to tighten these up. Get this. See, look, that can move. I need to get that set right, and then with these still a bit loose. I can then gently push these up and so I can it'll hit the rack and I can just set that right. So first of all we're going to do the outside and then we're going to set this just right so it touches that rack but not too tight and we'll go backwards and forwards and feel, feel how it feels because at the moment look, that's horrible. That feels like it's completely buggered. But that's just because I don't I think because the, those little tiny, tiny gears are not quite touching the rack properly. So let me do the black one first. All right, and I've, I've, I've basically tightened them all up now. It's a bit of trial and error, but look, that, that runs beautifully. It hasn't got the uh, stick which it used to have. So yeah, I say it's, it's, a, bit of, it's a bit of trial and error, because there's a bit of movement in, these, uh, in, in this case here. So what you have to do is basically tighten up these two, these two here, which tighten up the, the main workings and then this the black casing that holds it all well, there's a little bit of movement so you just gently push it up into the rack and then just just try and now just tighten it very very loosely top and bottom and then run it out and see if it works and if it's no problem then you can tighten it fully check again but if it grates you might need to just loosen it off and pull it down or push it up or whatever normally pull it down yeah looks looks brilliant so I've definitely, definitely lost the uh, the sticky bit I used to have because it was at 47 and it would stick. So there was obviously muck or something that was in there. 